For this tutorial, we're making a radio-controlled spider that can walk around obstacles, walk over rough terrain, or even walk upside down like a real spider. And you can control it in real time or record its animation and play it back. This is all done with the Character Physics plugin for Blender, and you can find the information in the video description. So, for those of you who have very little patience and are probably overconfident, like myself, we're going to start this video with the TLDR version. So the first thing that you want to do is choose your character. In this case, I pulled this lovely Black Widow off of BlendSwap.com, and I will post a link in the description so that you can get that. And it's already set up with IK targets so that it moves around and it's, uh, you know, easy to animate in the typical way that you would animate. But with the Character Physics plugin, we're going to be using a different animation paradigm. The good news is, if you already have characters that are set up and rigged to animate in the typical way, they are still really useful. You'll just build some extra stuff around your existing characters to use the Character Physics paradigm. So I built my animation rig for use with the Character Physics plugin. And I started with a base bone down here, and you'll notice all my bones are connected. And I extruded for the head and for the abdomen of the spider, and then for each of the legs. And I have a minimal number of joints, and the joints, you know, these bones come down and they meet the existing IK targets. So that is my physics rig. The next thing I did was to take the original IK targets for each of the feet and create a copy location constraint so that this uh, can move my existing character's IK targets. The next thing I did was duplicate my physics rig to make a pose target and I set up IK targets on my pose target so that I could move the legs in your typical IK fashion. And I created a very simple animation for each of those empties so that they move in sort of a walking style motion like a so. Next thing I did was use the character physics plugin to create some influence targets. So this empty here, that's a cube shaped, and this empty back here uh, influences this part of the armature right here and this part of the armature right here so that I can get a sort of local gravity effect. So this will always pull downwards relative to the direction the spider is pointing. And that's what enables me to let him walk upside down on the log or sideways or whatever. And I can also use that to steer the character because it moves those influence targets and that puts a force to sort of twist the rig so that the spider can walk around in circles. Last thing that I did was create something for it to walk around on, which in this case is this cheesy looking log. And I made it a collider object and uh, now that I have my animation of these empties looping on the timeline, I can just hit go and my spider walks along the surface of the log. And then I can grab my controls here, this empty right here, and I can change the angle of it and make him walk around in a circle, for example. And that is the TLDR of how to set up a walking spider. Now let's get to the detailed tutorial. Before we try to create a rig for our spider, I need to show you some things about this new animation paradigm that is this character physics thing. So we're going to create a really basic rig and make it walk just to show the idea here. And for that, let's add an armature and Let's make it into a four-legged creature that's somewhat interesting. So um, I want a base bone. So this will be our base bone. 
and we want it to have, we'll make it four legs because that's simple. Let's see. Make it sort of wide so that it's a little bit more stable, I guess. And let's see, we want to um, duplicate that like that. Does that make does that work? Yeah, okay. And I want, I actually want these to be connected so they match the other side so that they look the same. So I'm going to click connected. So now all of these are connected. And I'm going to clear bone roll. So yeah, clear roll is right there. So that they're even, that will make it a little bit more uniform behavior on both sides. Maybe make it a little longer this way. Looks kind of cool. And to make it look weird and robotic, I'm going to do that. Maybe that's not something I need to do, but I was playing with it earlier and it looked really cool, so we're going to do that. Uh, now we need some feet. All right, now we have a four-legged spidery looking thing or robot or, I don't know, whatever it is. And we're going to make it walk. So we need a surface for it to walk on. So let's just add our basic plane. Scale it up big enough that it doesn't, well, I don't know. We can make him walk off the edge. That seems like it'd be more fun. All right, I want to do this just for the heck of it. Because why not? So you can slide off the end. And yeah, maybe I'll move this this way. I don't know. All right, now we want to make the pose target for this guy. So we're going to select our physics armature and we're going to select this one as our pose target. When we do that, we get the physics visualization mesh. And in theory, if this is running correctly, then when I hit live, whoa, it works. Uh, this needs to be set to collider so that it doesn't fall through it. And I turn it on. Now it's working. And it's kind of floppy. And that is because of the angular strength. So we turn that up a little bit. It'll be a little bit more... Yeah. A little more responsive. Maybe have it run a little faster by putting it something smaller. 50. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. All right, now we need to make a walk cycle for this guy. Okay, for our walk cycle, we need to have some controls on our pose target. So I'm going to add some IK targets to this. So we're going to go down to bone constraints here. We're in pose mode and we select this bone and we add an inverse kinematic like so. And we want to set the chain length, length to that spot right there. So that way it will move these three bones in the chain. So the chain length is set to three. And we're actually going to do that for all of them. And then we also need something for our IK targets to point at. So for that, let's just add some empties. I want to do shift add and empty. And the sphere is fine. Make spheres for the other feet. Snap them into place. And then this can point here. And this can point here. 
and this can point here and done. Now I can control the legs like that, which is what I want. So I can make some kind of walking type thing. And now when we run this and we mess around with our IK, it's going to move the legs. Which is kind of fun to play with. Ooh, I'm dancing. Ah, I'm freaking out. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, in theory, we could make something like a walk cycle this way by doing a motion like that. And, you know, we'll have to uh, set it up so that it works correctly. All right, so to get this thing walking, let's um, turn that off for now. And we're going to make a walk cycle animation. So for that, we basically need the feet to do a motion like this. So let's go to frame one, and this is going to be our neutral position. So we're going to set the location. We got our dope sheet open here so we can see these keyframes that we just added. And then we're going to run about yay far. Actually, how long does it need to run? Not very long. And then go like here, keyframe it again. Go a little farther up here keyframe it again, go twice as far over here, keyframe it again, and go about yay far, and we actually want to be at this altitude, but be forward like that, keyframe it again, okay, so now we've got this kind of a Not terrible. Yeah, that's about what I wanted. And then this one we can duplicate to go here. So now we have. Yep. And then if we set our end frame to 57. And we play this. We have our walk cycle. And notice at the end there, there's a little hiccup. We can get rid of that hiccup that's actually coming from the smoothing caused by the Bezier curve. We're just duplicating that. And maybe this one? a little better. Smooth that out a little bit. All right, now in order to get these legs to offset, we're just going to duplicate this whole thing like that and grab every other leg like this. And then we're going to just move those guys. So until we get to where they're offset. We've got it set to 55, so it's going to be half of that, which is, let's say, 27 frames. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. And now, when I go to make this thing walk, it's probably going to just get dizzy, fall over, and flip upside down because this isn't really a stable configuration for walking in real life. So, see what happens here. 
it's resetting every first frame so um, I'll set the frame reset to not do that yeah it can't really walk because its legs are kind of getting caught on each other and so on so there's several things you can do to fix that uh, you could make it a six-legged creature so that it can just walk stably and that's an option and that's what we'll do with our spider we'll have eight legs which will be stable uh, another thing that you can do is make an edit here so we're gonna edit both of these at the same time so they stay homogeneous is that the word uh, so that the number of bones corresponds between the two they, their configuration will be the same so what I'm going to do is just add a child bone to the base here. It goes down. It doesn't have to go down very far. In fact, you don't want it to go down very far because you don't probably want it to hit the ground. Um, and then I'm going to do physics setup again so I get the physics for that guy. And then make sure it still works. Yeah, it still works. And then I'm going to add a stabilizer to this, uh, which in this case is going to be a rotation target. Set it to some small value. And then in theory, that rotation target will keep it more upright. Um, yeah. So now it walks along and it stays more or less upright. And I notice the feet are sliding. I think that's because I never set the friction up. I'll set the friction to one. That's a little better. And we can also up the gravity a little bit so it gets a little bit better friction. And then got the angular and linear solvers already set pretty high somehow I don't remember doing that um, gravity is probably too strong there we go so it's kind of walking and it's trying to maintain an upright position with the uh, angular solver oh, as it flies up into space or with this uh, rotation target sorry so like if I rotate this it's gonna match that rotation because that's what a rotation influence target does um, and that will enable you to do things like biped rigs and get them walking and whatnot and we could certainly do a lot to clean this up and make it work better um, you can mess around with the velocity, and that has some effect on how able, or how well it's able to walk, and some other things. Um, it's kind of bouncy still, and so like, I think if you turn the velocity down, it might bounce less, but it's harder for it to move through space. It's probably a perfect value for that. And I could also clean up this quite a bit by, I don't know, what happens if we double the speed of it? That might be fun. And then we set the end frame to 27. Reset it, see what it does. Oh, now he's running like a racehorse. That's pretty cool. Maybe just turn the rotation thing off once and see what it does with this speed. It's not very stable. Kind of freaks out. 
But, uh, you know, you can imagine lots of things you could do here with this plugin to make really interesting machines and make them walk and such. So, let's get to making our spider walk then. So I've got a link in the description to this model on blendswap.com and when you open it up it looks like this. It's got the spider over here in a couple of different windows and what I'm just going to do here is copy the rig part because I don't really care about anything else. I don't want this camera. I don't think I want this square. I just want this part and I'm going to control copy it uh, with control C. I guess you can't see that uh, but I'm hitting control C to copy these objects that I have selected and then I'm going to open my other file and paste it in. Okay, so I hit Control V and I pasted it and it actually looked just like this. It's nice and centered and looks pretty good. Um, so now we can maybe do a little bit of cleanup. Um, this, for example, these bones are kind of annoying and I don't need to see them necessarily. So I think I'm going to move them to a new layer just so that I'm not looking at them. Uh, I think these are all individual armatures on this particular model, which is fine. As long as the IK targets work, I don't really care. So I'm going to move those to a new collection and call it, like, rigs, I guess. Okay, and make it so that I don't have to look at it. And I could move these there too. Move to a rigs. Um, you know, this is also kind of slow, and that is partly because it's got a bunch of subdivision surface modifiers on a bunch of already somewhat dense meshes. So I am going to go into this lovely little, looks like a printer outfit over here. Wait, no, I want this one. Yeah. Uh, what is this called? Render properties? And under Simplify, um, I guess I've already got it set in mine. Uh, max subdivisions you want to set to zero for our purposes. And uh, there might be some particle systems or something running on this too. You might have to disable those to get the speed up. I don't remember for sure if I've like already done that in the settings somewhere. But if it's really, really laggy, then it's probably because of particles or subdivision surface or something like that. So keep that in mind. And uh, now let's start building our rig. So we want it centered on this guy and can make sure this is all still working. I think it is. This moves the whole thing. Uh, this moves, wait, this moves the body. So yeah, I think I can make it work with that. So we're gonna add a, a simple armature in the center there. Maybe set it to show in front. And maybe make it sticks so it's easier to see what we're doing. And then um, I wanna do, let's see. I'm going to extrude Actually, I need to see, I want to extrude from here, so I'm going to flip this over so that I'm doing my children correctly, or, I don't know, maybe I don't need to do it that way. Let me think about this. Yeah, I'll do it this way. So we're going to rotate this 90 degrees, do that again, and then move this up like that. doesn't need to be super big so like that and then we'll extrude this out to like right here I want it to be on this center right here which I don't know if I can do that I might have to do something more annoying like 
selection to cursor. Okay. And I'm just going to do that for all of the bones, but that's going to take a minute, so let me pause it. Okay, so I've got uh, all of those bones extruded, and then I did like a cursor snap to all of the feet. Uh, and you're not going to be able to get much of a walk cycle with just these bones, so we're going to select all these guys and going to put another joint in the center so we're just going to do a subdivide and then we want to select these middle portions let's see can we just do it like this probably yeah that makes sense and then there we go it looks kind of like a spider skeleton or a rig that could make a spider walk and I don't know if it might add to the realism if you lined these up with the actual legs. It might a little bit, or it probably wouldn't. So you could feel free to experiment with that. I don't care, so I'm not going to. Um, let's see. We also might want like the abdomen to uh, move with the physics engine, and it's set up. It's got this IK target for the back part of the spider here. Is gigantic booty. Uh, so we could do that. Um, there's also these ones for the mandibles or uh, I can't remember what you call those things that a spider would have. I don't know if the females actually have these. I think this is something that the male has. So this spider might not be anatomically correct. But I don't know. Don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure. Um, Pedipalps. Is that what these are called? On the male, they have pedipalps. And they're for breeding, but who cares? All right. Uh, so for the abdomen, might as well add a thing. Add a bone for the abdomen. I'm just going to extrude it back like this and go roughly to there. So we can have this follow that if we want to. And you can also have, um, I'm going to put one out in the front to get the rotation effect so that I can steer it like a radio controlled spider, like real spiders in real life, which are radio controlled. And then um, I think I want to set the bone roll. So like if you look at this in octahedral, they're all kind of random. I think if I do clear roll, then it works a little bit more stable. They match, you get symmetry out of it, and um, that should work a little better. Because uh, the angular forces might not be exactly the same on both sides because of how I'm doing my solver, because it's a lazy solver that is fast but isn't as mathematically clean as it could be. So, I don't know, it's a trade-off, but, you know, it's fast, so. Um, clear roll fixes most of those issues. All right, uh, now we need to, I guess I can see if this works. So, do like that. And make this the physics rig and this the pose target like we did before. And see if it runs. It does. Yep, so we can give my creature life with this lovely bouncing. Oh, it's a dead spider now. I guess its legs would curl up if it was really dead. And when we rotate these, yep, it does what I would expect. All right, so we're going to do like what we did before and put IK targets on this guy. Um, so we go into pose mode, and we go to bone constraints, and we put inverse kinematics on there, and we set the chain length to, in this case, 2. Yep. And then we're going to add an empty here. Like uh, 
not in edit mode, not in pose mode. Uh, empty sphere is fine. Scale it down, make it look nice, and set the what you call it to that. And now this can move his leg. And I'm gonna go ahead and do what I just did for all of the other legs. Okay, so I got all of my things set up and you can see that my spider rig down there is looking like a spider doing push-ups on a mirror. It's moving the way that you would expect it to. And that's because I have it turned on still, which you don't want to turn on a spider that could get dangerous. So sorry for that. Uh, so I'm going to turn this off and now we're going to make our walk cycle just like we did before. So grab these guys real simply and one of the ways I made a walk cycle once is I just put an object here and offset the empty and then I had it spin and it made the thing move like in a circle and that works and you might find that that's easier. Um, Maybe I'll do that. Uh, sure, why not? Let's try it that way this time, because you saw how to do it the other way. This might be more fun. So we're going to add uh, another empty right here. Just a single arrow. Going to make these guys child objects. And then we're going to like make this offset. So like this one will move down by like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And this one will move up by 0.3 or whatever. And now when this rotates, it's going to give the feet that sort of walking type motion. And this might not actually work because Taking steps is more like how it would really walk. Um, but, you know, I'm interested to try it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other legs while I pause it real quick. And actually, before I do this for the other legs, I'm going to add a rotating motion to this guy. So I'm going to rotate it here, and then... We'll just say that it's going to take that many frames to finish its rotation. And now, let's see, I want to go halfway, rotate it to 180, key it again. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And we actually want it to rotate the other way, so um, rotate 180, and hmm, I don't know. If I do that, is it just gonna. Oh, wait. Oh, that worked. I didn't think that would work. I'm glad it did. Okay. And now I'm gonna duplicate this. And duplicate it this way. And in theory, yeah, I don't like the way that the rotation is pausing. It slows down and, oh, it's rotating backwards there. Oh, I know why. It's because of what's happening on the graph editor. So if we open up our graph editor, and we look at this rotation. It's actually doing that. And I don't want it to do that. I want it to do more like this. Like this guy would be rotated like that. And this guy would be rotated like that. And and we don't actually need these other things, so get rid of this. Now it just spins and keeps going smoothly. 
and which is what I want. Okay, I like that. All right, uh, hopefully I didn't key its location so I could make another one of these empties and move it around and it, yeah, it will also spin. So now that I've got this rotation added to this empty, now I'm gonna duplicate it and hook these legs up to it and put the offset in it while I pause it here. Okay, so I haven't offset the legs yet because I just wanted to make it clear that the way we wanna offset this is that you know every other leg is going to be the opposite of its adjacent leg so when this one's down here this one here is going to be up so we want you know like this one to be up and this one to be up and this one to be up and this one to be up so i'm going to move those because like right now if we spin it you know they're spinning but they're not actually walking like the front ones are so i did point three, I believe. And now those ones are moving correctly. So I'm going to select the other legs and we're going to go down with those legs. Okay, so these legs we can move down uh, by the same thing, right? Oh, that was not what I wanted. Um, and I also need to get... Wait. Oh, I need to pick up this guy too. So make sure we go back to neutral before we do that or else it will mess it up. Uh, negative 0.3. Is that right? That looks correct. Does it look good from the side? Uh, yes. All right. So let's see if this guy will actually walk now. Well, he's resetting every uh, frame because I have a uh, frame reset on. I'm just going to set the somewhere where it's not going to reset. Oh, look at that lovely motion of walking. So much easier than I thought it was going to be. Until it walks over here and falls off the cliff. All right, so we're in really good shape now. Uh, we're basically almost done. Uh, the next thing we need to do is... Let's turn this thing off of live and reset it. Uh, we just need to take these guys right here and constrain them to the tails of the corresponding bones in our rig. And then we're going to want to take our base right here and we're going to uh, make it like a child object of like the base of this rig. So um, I'll do one and then I'll pause it and do the others. So I'm going to select, let's see, I'm gonna select this guy and we don't need that open anymore. Uh, constraints, no, constraints, there we go. Copy location, which is right here. And it's going to copy the location of the armature. And then it's got to target a specific bone. And I don't know what this guy named the bones. So this one is called bone.009, um, which means I have to find. Um, I'm going to have to hide some stuff to see it. It's in here somewhere. Probably at the origin of the armature. So yeah, it's going to be over here. It's right here. Um, this constraint, bone.009, there it is. And you'll see that it's like up at the head of the bone. We're going to go... So it slides down. I want to slide it down all the way to the tail. So head tail is going to be set to one. So I am going to go ahead and do that for all of these bones while I pause it. Okay, so I've got all of my legs properly constrained to the tails of all of my physics rig bones. So that all the legs move like you would want. 
And um, you could like take this one and hook it up to the base, or you could do this one and hook it up to the base. Um, I'm not sure how it would work with the abdomen. I'm also not completely sure I care. Um, if you're going to use a copy location constraint, then you would need to offset it with an empty or something. Uh, so you can also instead just like use a child to bone kind of thing. So like, let me hide this and let's take this right here. Alt P. Okay, and then bone. Okay, that worked. And now when I rotate this bone, that one should do its thing. And that will, like if I wanted to set this to be really wobbly, I can turn its uh, rotation stiffness down. Uh, what is it? Angular force. Yeah, angle force. I can turn it way down, and that will make the abdomen look like it's sort of heavy, and will make the abdomen really sort of bob up and down while it's walking. I think a real black widow kind of drags its body along the ground, um, but if it's walking on a web, it would sway maybe a little more. So you can play with that to get a little more realism out of the abdomen movement. And then, um, just so that the the whole spider stays generally. Um, we don't want it to like walk really far away from its own origin, because like if it walked for an entire mile, you might get floating point errors or something like that. And I don't know. I just I think it would be a little cleaner if I take the armature itself and make it the child of the base bone in my rig. So. Um, this guy here. Boom. Alright, now when I move this, yes, the whole thing moves. Which is what I want. And now for the moment of truth, will it walk? Um, we want to make sure this is set to animated here. And probably want to like maybe start there and just kind of let it run and there it goes it is clumsily striding along and I'm gonna play with the walk a little bit so like I'm noticing that these legs are stretching out too far in the back and so I'm just gonna move this up a little bit and maybe the front can move back a little bit so that they take a little bit higher steps. And I like that a little bit better. Of course, he's kind of bouncy and he's kind of slidey. And part of the reason that he's so bouncy and spinny and unstable and whatnot uh, is because then I'm using that circular motion for the legs. So... I can also do stuff like if I want his body to be closer to the ground, then I could just grab this and um, move it down and his body will be closer to the ground. That will make him walk a little more stable. Or I could make him walk a lot more tall and he'll be a little bit kind of freaky, if that makes sense. Probably. Having it down a little bit will be good. Kind of wants to spin around because he's not real stable. I could probably also tweak the velocity a bit. So what's it, 98.95 would probably make it a tiny bit more stable. And if I turn up the angular and linear, like, make this 20, make this 20, I don't know. And then reset that, see what that looks like. Turn the velocity back up so I could move forward. Maybe make the gravity a little stronger. 
Anyway, there's lots of things that I can do to affect how he walks. Now he's kind of galloping like a horse. From the top it looks pretty cool. I think his legs are sort of running into each other though. So, I don't know. I could mess around with this all day probably. a little better. Alright, so now I want to make this uh, more like a real spider by adding radio controls, because we all know that like birds and spiders are controlled by the government to spy on us, and they're not real, they're all radio controlled. Um, I guess it's not really radio controlled since I'm not using radios, I'm using a mouse and keyboard, but you know, similar idea. So for that, I want to add some influence targets. So we're going to add an influence target here and here that will let me give it some torque so I can do steering and some other stuff. So let me just show you what that will do. Uh, we're going to go down and do tail target. And we're going to make this run a little smoother. We're going to make the spring tension here like 0.1. I guess. And this one's kind of further back and it's heavier over here, so probably to balance. Um, we probably want this target to be a little bit stronger there. So we're going to make this one 0.2, which is double the 0.1 over here. Uh, and now when I run this, the spider's basically stuck on these two targets. And I can make him fly around through the air, like Mad Eye Moody did with that whip scorpion in Harry Potter. Until he was like Crucio, and he killed it. And the spider whips, well, whip scorpion, in the movie was dead, and stopped walking. There, dead spider. Uh, to make it easier to control, let's see. Try to make it go back to where it started here. Uh, I'm just going to snap these back into place. Eh. Right there. And this one back to here. And I want these to be able to influence the spider, but also move with the spider. So I'm going to snap my cursor to there and add a new empty and I'm gonna actually make this the child of my armature so we'll just make it a child of the base bone in the armature and then so in theory um, yeah that moves with the armature and reset and I want these guys to be children of this object here. So now it moves with it. All right. Now, now that I have that in place, I can actually turn off the regular gravity, which is currently set to whatever. Just set it to zero. And now it'll just sort of hover in the air. Doesn't really move much. But if I offset this, no, offset this, then these bones here are going to try to move down to where the empty is. And so it's going to put a force that is going to be pointing towards the bottom of the spider. That way if the spider walks upside down, it will still have a force pointing downwards and he'll be able to walk on the wall or upside down or whatever, or around a sphere, or around a log like in the beginning of this video. So let's just do this, and if you want to strengthen that effect, you can just move it a little further. 
and it'll have more of a gravity effect. Kind of looks weird walking without his giant booty. Um, it'll have more of a gravity effect or less of a gravity effect. You can also grab these empties or the bones that they're set to and increase the spring forces and that will increase the strength of the effect. And then to get our sort of radio control effect, we can simply rotate this uh, controller thing that I put here. So I'll go to item and you know right now it's walking mostly straight barring some you know asymmetries in the actual rig. If I want it to go around in a circle I can do that kind of thing and it's gonna um, let me reset that real quick. It's gonna go around in circles or could go around in circles the other way. I'm gonna walk around in circles that way. So uh, that's um, pretty much it for setting up the radio controls to make it like a real spider. Um, you might want to record what you're doing. So to record, it's pretty simple. We're gonna, let's see, I just wanna reset this real quick. And we're going to name our action because it needs to record to an action that's not currently active so that the animation is not in conflict with the physics engine. So we're just gonna create a name here. Spider E walk. And that will automatically generate an action with this name and start recording keyframes to it once we set this to run. Um, <clears throat> we can have it record every frame, so it will skip zero frames, meaning it'll put a keyframe for every bone at every frame. Or we could set it to skip so that it partially uses interpolation between frames, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> I'm going to set it to like no skipping. And we're just going to start the recording at frame 20. I don't know. Uh, that means it'll start at frame 20 and record from there. All right, now I want to be able to do some radio controls on it. So let's get it walking and then let's have it take some turns. Like so. Kind of unrealistic if it turned too sharp. And let me see, did I have the recording set? Yes, I did. So I can turn that off, turn that off, and then find my spidery walk. And there's a recording of my lovely animation that I just created. Whee! Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks creepy like a real spider. Like he would run really fast. Except he might be bobbing up and down a little too much. I don't know. Whatever. It's all adjustable. You can change the height of the steps and everything. So I believe that is the gist of it. Um, yeah. Happy blending, everybody. Uh, information for how to get this is in the description. And feel free to e email me at characterphysics101 at gmail if you have questions. So that's all for now. Thanks.